Ni hao. Welcome to Ask Andy to Learn Chinese. In this video, our topic is Ask and Answer Yes or No Questions in Chinese. I'm going to answer three questions. Question number one, how to ask a yes or no question in Chinese. Maybe you have known that there are two patterns for asking a yes or no question in Chinese. I am also going to let you know which pattern is better for you to use as a Chinese learner. Question number two, yes equals to 是的 and no equals to 不. Is that right? You probably would find the translations for yes and no with 是的 or 不 in most dictionaries. Is that right? I'm going to answer that in this video. Question number three, how to answer a yes or no question. Why do I make that point? Because the way we answer a yes or no question is different from that in English. Let's get started. Question number one, how to ask a yes or no question in Chinese. So we have two patterns for asking a yes or no question in Chinese. And I'm going to let you know in this video which pattern is better for you to use as a Chinese learner. Let's start with some examples. Is China big? So this is a yes or no question in English. How do we say that in Chinese? So we have two patterns for yes or no questions with adjectives. So pattern one is subject plus adjective 不 adjective. Pattern two is subject plus adjective plus ma. So it will be 中国大不大? 中国大不大? Or 中国大吗? 中国大吗? So which one is better for you to use as an English speaker? I think pattern one would be easier for you to use, or it's easier for you to understand at the very beginning, because for literal translation, it would be China, big or not big. Big, not big. It's just an alternative choice. Big or not big. But for pattern two, it finishes with ma. What is that ma? It's not easy for you to get. You see, is China big? We don't have that particle in the end of the sentence. Plus, if you check ma in a dictionary, the translation, probably you couldn't find the translation. They just say ma is a particle in the end of a sentence to show it's a yes or no question. How do you remember such a long definition? So I recommend you to remember it with my hypothetical translation. Ma means or not. Then let's do it again. So China, big or not big? China, big or not? See, they are almost exactly the same. So as a beginner, I recommend you to start with this one, with this pattern. Plus, da is a monosyllabic adjective. And native Chinese tend to use this pattern for monosyllabic adjectives. What is monosyllabic? One syllable to make it easier for you to understand. Let's move on with another example. Is he Chinese? So here we have another two patterns. Actually, they are similar. So pattern one would be subject plus verb, 不 verb plus object. Pattern two would be subject plus verb plus object plus ma. So is he Chinese? It is. 他是不是中国人? And in pattern two, it is 他是中国人吗? 他是中国人吗? Which one is better for you to use? The same. I recommend you to use the pattern one because 是 is also a monosyllabic verb that will be easier for you to get. And it is easier for you to understand at the very beginning. So that will be is or not is. Okay, let's move on. Another example. Do you want any spice? Or do you want it spicy? You're going to hear this question a lot in Chinese restaurants. Almost every waiter or waitress will ask you this question. Do you want any spice? Or do you want it spicy? So the pattern is the same. Pattern one, subject plus verb, 不 verb plus object. Pattern two, subject plus verb plus object plus ma. So it is, 你要不要辣? 你要不要辣? And, 
要辣吗？你要辣吗 ？You may notice that I made 你 in brackets because in the actual conversation you may not hear that, and it is easy to understand the waiter or waitress is talking to you. He or she is not talking to somebody else, so they can omit 你 and looks you in your eyes. For this question, I also recommend you to use pattern one as a Chinese learner, because first, this is easier for you to understand because it's want or don't want. Secondly, it's a monosyllabic verb. Native Chinese tend to use pattern one too. Let's move on to another question. Do you like apples? Do you like apples? So we still have the same two patterns. Pattern one will be subject plus verb plus verb. Object. Pattern two will be subject plus verb plus object plus ma. So for this one, it's a bit different because we have the verb 喜欢喜欢 is a disyllabic verb. Disyllabic. What is disyllabic? Disyllabic is two syllables. So you see, if we talk with the pattern one, that will be 你喜欢不喜欢苹果你喜欢不喜欢苹果 It's a bit too long, right? That's why I made Juan in brackets. You would probably hear native Chinese speak with 你喜不喜欢苹果你喜不喜欢苹果 For this one, I have to let you know. As a native Chinese, I tend to use the second one, and it's easy to understand because it is a shorter. Listen to it. 你喜欢苹果吗你喜欢苹果吗 It is natural. It is more natural, and it is shorter to say, right? So for this one, I recommend you to use pattern two. But as a Chinese learner at the very beginning, you can still use pattern one. As your Chinese improves, you can use pattern two. Just get used to use ma in the end of the sentence to make a yes or no question. Let's move on. Do you have any water? So in Chinese, we don't have that any. We just say, "Do you have water?" So for this one, remember, pattern one and pattern two. Pattern two is the same, but pattern one changes. Pattern one is subject plus 有没有 plus object. So why it is different? Because 有 is a special verb in Chinese. So when we negate other verbs, we just use 不 But when we negate 有 we use 没 So we say 没有 to mean don't have, but for other verbs we use 不 Remember, we don't say 不有 You may ask why. So for this point, you can think about English. So in English, have is also a special verb. We can negate with the haven't, but not every verb you can negate with ent in the end, right? So you just remember have is also a special verb in Chinese. We negate it with 没 so that will be 没有 that is. Don't have, and the whole sentence will be: 你有没有水？你有没有水 ？Pattern two would be: 你有水吗？你有水吗 ？Pattern two is the same. So for this one, I also recommend you to use pattern one because 有 is a monosyllabic verb, and you use the pattern 有没有 is easier for you to understand, and native Chinese tend to say that too. Let's move on. Do you know how to speak English? So in English, we may just say, "Do you speak English?" But in Chinese, what we say is, "Do you know how to speak English?" We are going to use the verb 会 So the pattern one is subject plus 会不会 plus verb plus object. So that will be 你会不会说英文你会不会说英文 Pattern two is. Subject plus 会 plus verb plus object plus 吗 That is, 你会说英文吗？你会说英文吗 ？Which one is better for you to use again? So 会 is a monosyllabic verb. So pattern one is easier for you to get and it's easier for you to say. So you can do pattern one. That will be 你会不会说英文？你会不会说英文？ Okay, let's move on. Let me summarize for you. So there are two patterns for asking a yes or no question in Chinese. Pattern one is affirmative plus negative. Remember, this one 
is more likely for a monosyllabic adjective or verb. What is monosyllabic? Remember, one syllable. So an adjective or a verb it is just one syllable. And pattern two, using ma in the end of the sentence. Remember, this is not easy for you to use as an English speaker or a European language speaker. If you are like a Japanese, I recommend you to use pattern two because in Japanese we have the same particle in the end of the sentence like desu ka. That's the same as ma. But if you are not a Japanese speaker, I recommend you to start with the pattern one. That will be easier for you to get because it's easy for you to understand that is affirmative and negative. That's like an alternative choice. And when you are moving on, you need to get used to pattern two. That is more likely for you to hear. So listening is always larger than speaking when you are learning a new language. So for listening, you need to understand both. But when you are speaking, I recommend you to use affirmative plus negative at the very beginning. Later, you can use both. You can have your own preference and find the one you prefer. Let's move on. So we have done question number one, and let's move on to question number two. Yes equals to 是的, and no equals to 不. Is that right? Okay, yes equals to 是的, no equals to 不. So we take those two as the answers to yes or no questions, right? Let's see. Let's start with this example. So is China big? So the question is, 中国大不大? 中国大不大? So can we answer like 是的? 是的 for yes? Or 不? 不 for no? I'm sorry to let you know, no. We don't answer yes or no with 是的 or 不. So you're going to ask, are the translations in the dictionaries wrong? Actually, it is like that. The 是的 is for a confirmation. It is not the answer yes to a yes or no question. But it can be yes it is, or you think it is indeed. See this example. So if the question is like this, 中国很大吧? 中国很大吧? That is, China is big, right? So this is not just a yes or no question. You are asking for a confirmation. So you can answer 是的, 是的, which means yes it is. Or you can think that is indeed. In this case, you can use this 是的, like you agree to someone's point. You can say that. And for no, native Chinese barely say no. Actually, I made a video about the Chinese way of refusal. So in China, we barely say no. We have different ways to turn people down to say no or to refuse. You can check the video here. And let's move on. So we have done question number one and question number two. Let's move on to question number three. How to answer a yes or no question? So how to answer a yes or no question? That is sort of the answer to what is yes and what is no in Chinese? Let's start with those examples. So is China big? So the question is 中国大不大? 中国大不大? How to answer it? How to say yes or no? So answer one in Chinese is we just say 中国很大. 中国很大. What is this 很? You can check this video to know more about the pattern 很 and understand the difference between 很 and 是. So I already made a video to explain the difference between 很 and 是. And here, this is the way to make a statement to say, to describe 中国很大. That's the complete answer. That's answer one. What about answer two? We answer with 中国不大. 中国不大. Here, you see, I made 中国很 in brackets and 中国 in brackets. What's left is 大 or 不大. So here, do remember my trick for you. To answer a yes or no question, what you really need to remember is, quote, remember this important trick for you. You just need to quote. What do you quote? You quote the adjective here. So you see, a more authentic answer would just be 大, that's yes. And no will be 不大, 
That's why I was saying, 是的 and 不 are not the proper translations for yes or no in dictionaries for yes or no in Chinese because we have so many different ones. If we have a different adjective, we are going to have a different yes. If we have a different adjective, we are going to have a different no. That's why it's so difficult to translate yes or no in Chinese. But you can remember my trick. You just quote the adjective. Let's move on. So is he Chinese? So the question is, 他是不是中国人？他是不是中国人？ So、the complete answer is 他是中国人 or 他不是中国人 What about the shorter answer? What about the authentic answer? That will be 是 or 不是 So the same. Just remember my trick for you. Quote, quote the adjective, quote the verb. Here we quote the verb. And then, do you want any spice? So the question is, 你要不要辣你要不要辣 How to answer that question? Answer one is the complete answer would be 我要辣我要辣 But the authentic answer would be shorter. That would be just 要 Quote the verb. And the answer two would be 我不要辣我不要辣 And you can simply answer 不要不要 Here it goes with a third answer. Answer three. That would be 要一点儿，要一点儿。I said that er. That's for for the northern part of China, especially Beijing. Actually, I prefer to go without it. You can go without it. Just say 要一点，要一点 ，or 要微辣，要微辣。So what is 一点？一点 or 一点儿 is a little. So you just say want a little. What about 微辣？微辣 is micro spicy. Or micro spice. What is that? If it's not easy for you to understand this wei la, maybe you have known. You must have known this one. WeChat. How do we say WeChat in Chinese? WeChat. What is that? See, the wei here is the same. Wei means micro. What about xin? Xin is a message. So WeChat in Chinese is micro message. It's so logical, right? I made a video about WeChat and Alipay. You can check it out here to know more about like scan QR code in Chinese. Let's move on. For this question, do you like apples? So here, I recommend you to use ma. Why? Because 喜欢 is a disyllabic verb, so with two syllables. So you can ask the question in this way: 你喜欢苹果吗？你喜欢苹果吗 ？What about the answer? The answer is the same. So answer one would be quote the verb 喜欢，喜欢。Answer two would be negate the verb that will be 不喜欢，不喜欢。Here it goes with the third answer. So that is 还可以，还可以。What is 还可以？还 is still， 可以 is okay. So altogether that will be still okay. Actually, it means it's okay or so-so in Chinese. And then for this question, do you have any water? So in Chinese, we don't have that any. We just ask, do you have water? So have, 有 is a monosyllabic verb. So I recommend you to use pattern one. So that will be 你有没有水？你有没有水？ So for this 水 if you find the pronunciation not easy. You can. We can make it easier in this way. So the full spelling for shui actually is S H U E I, but it's still not easy for you. You make it into S H W E I, shui. So right now you you are going to find it easier. Shui. So 你有没有水？你有没有水？ Remember my trick for you. Quote the verb. So answer one is. 有 answer one is 有 answer two is 没有没有 Remember when we negate 有 we use 没 not 不 so we don't say 不有 we say 没有 Remember that. How to remember that? Have is also a special verb in English. It is also different from other verbs in Chinese. 
And then, do you know how to speak English? So here, the question is: 你会不会说英文？你会不会说英文 ？How to answer that question? How to answer that yes or no question? Again, quote. Answer one would be 会会 and it is the same. So this U I is not the full spelling. So the full spelling is H U E I. It's still not easy for you. You make it into H W E I. 会 Right now it's easy for you. 会会会 means know how to. That's answer one. Answer two is no. So we don't say no. We say 不会不会 So we quote the verb. 不会 And then here it goes with answer three too. So for answer three, so that will be for answer three. That will be 会说一点儿会说一点儿 Or you just say 会说一点会说一点 I tend to speak without the r. I would just say 会说一点会说一点 That is know how to speak a little. Okay, we have done most of the contents. Right now, let's practice. Let's try it out. What we have learned today. So, is Chinese difficult? How to ask that yes or no question in Chinese? So, Chinese is 中文 difficult is 难 Remember, you can do with the pattern subject plus adjective 不 adjective. Why? Because 难 is a monosyllabic adjective. And we always start the question with a subject. Think about it. How do we say that in Chinese? That is, 中文难不难？中文难不难 ？Did you make it? And how to answer that question? Answer one is quote the adjective 难 Answer two is quote the no here. That is, 不难不难 And then for this question. Do you love me? It's an important question. I think most of you have known "I love you." That is, 我爱你 And in Chinese, we have some numbers for that. You can check the video here to know the special number in Chinese, which means "I love you." And how do you ask "Do you love me?" "I love you." That is, 我爱你 So love is 爱 And what about "Do you love me?" Remember the pattern. So the pattern is subject plus verb, 不 verb object, because I is a monosyllabic verb. So it is easier for you to use this pattern to ask the question. Think about it. Subject is you, and the object is me, and then the verb is I. So that is, 你爱不爱我？你爱不爱我？ How to answer that yes or no question? Answer one would be I. I quote it right. Answer two would be 不爱不爱 I hope the answer you get from somebody else is answer one. Let's move on. So the last question: Are you happy? Let's finish with a good question. Are you happy? So happy in Chinese is 开心开心 Kai means open. Xin is heart, so open heart.、Mm, it's logical, right? When your heart is open, your mind is open, you're happy. So how do we ask the question? Are you happy? But remember, kai xin is disyllabic, so it goes with the two syllables. I recommend you to use pattern two. So that will be subject plus adjective plus ma. How do we say that? Think about it. You is the subject. Happy, 开心 is here. So actually, it's so easy. So that is, 你开心吗？你开心吗 ？And how to answer it? Answer one would be quote the adjective, 开心，开心 Answer two is negate the adjective, 不开心，不开心 That's it. Thank you for watching. 再见。